Hey everyone, Mtest here, and today I want to take a look at The Wanderer and give you my initial impressions. This one's interesting, and I've seen a lot of random comments saying, he's trash, he's terrible, others calling him good, but for me, from the people that have been watching me, I saw quite a bit of negativity. I don't know if that's the case. I need to watch some of the other creators' videos and see kind of what their thoughts are, but I'm going to give you my thoughts. I understand why people might call him bad. There's also, it's day one. People don't have, you know, maxed out skills yet. They don't have a great artifact set farmed, right? You know, his artifact set is brand new. I guarantee no one's got 40 crit value uh, on a lot of these things. So, you know, I think it's very early to be making these big wild claims. I want to make a video about him as a character. Is he fun to play? What are some cool, you know, pros and cons about this guy? How do I feel about the Wanderer? So let's get into it. Uh, number one, because he's got this new set, there's other sets you could use, but this does seem pretty best in slot, right? And it's going to take time to grind this up, so that is a bit of a hindrance. But you can get him up and running and operational with some different sets. Um, I, I, if I'm getting the Wanderer, I would probably be one of the people farming this set. I'd be grinding it out because I want to, you know, I want to have the best Wanderer out there, and this set seems pretty much perfect for him. Uh, the weapon, um... You know, you could probably get away with something like a Wid Sith. Uh, a Wid Sith would would still hit really hard, in my opinion. Um, I I don't know if I would go for five star weapon with this guy uh, because this weapon is so niche, or if you have a different five star weapon, you could consider using it. Even something like the Skyward Atlas, like kind of would work because you're doing a bunch of normal attacks and it gives you elemental damage, it gives you attack percentage. I don't know. I, I don't know if I would recommend getting the weapon just because it's a lot of investment for this character that is seemingly kind of middle of the road or even low end, some people are saying. And uh, you could also miss and end up getting um, like Arataki Ito's weapon. And I don't know if you want that. So I would be careful in the weapon. As for the character, um, this E ability is pretty fun. It essentially just converts your attacks uh, somewhat like Arataki Ito. Or sorry, sorry, um, Ayato, <laughs> not Arataki, you know, like Ayato. And uh, the interesting thing is normal attack damage has higher scaling than charge attack damage. So realistically, um, if you're using this artifact set, what you'd want to do is use your charge attack to hit the opponent, get these bonuses, and then dash, you know, just smash out normal attacks. Because math, math says that that's more optimal. Uh, unless someone has some, some crazy insight there, uh, that seems the, the play. Pump off your charge attack as soon as you can, and then just spam the normal attacks. Um, you've got your 100 points. If you look at this, right? I'm in it right now. You can jump. You can dash. The cooldown is only like five seconds, so you can get back into this relatively quickly. But obviously, you're going to want to swap off your character. You're going to want to swap to your other characters and then come back. But when you use this bad boy, you pop into the air. Even if you're not attacking, you're going to lose points. So if you're going to be doing this, you want to spam this because... You're just wasting time if you don't, obviously. Um, it, it doesn't seem to burn that much energy, but like realistically what you want to do is like charge attack, boom, right away, and then just normal attacks. If you're moving and repositioning, you use a ton of energy. Do not press that button or his value is going down like this. And that is why I think some people are maybe calling him bad. If you're not using Wanderer with a shield and just face tanking stuff, I could understand why people would not like that, and I personally don't like that. Um, but, you know, the attacks seem seem pretty good. The scaling, I'm not a math guru. All I'm saying is, he's an animal guy, he can work against pretty much anything, and uh, he's unique. So, so there's some fun factor there, there's some, I guess, universal things there. Is he going to be better than Xiao as an animal DPS? As for the burst, this will actually pull you out of your E ability, so you need to be careful to not do it too early, or else you're literally just wasting all the value of the Wanderer. Pretty dumb. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not dumb that, that, that it happens, but you'd be pretty dumb to do it. Now, as for his burst, it's pretty simple. It's just a kind of a nuke. You hit them, does a bunch of damage, and uh, it does pull you out of your E ability, so you should obviously use this at the end or even kind of like in between rotations technically because there's, there's no real there's no real reason to use that when you have your E ability going. You'd be dumb to. 
Uh, this right here is what has me excited. I love this passive. I'm so hyped about this passive. When you attack enemies, um, if you're doing like slimes of different elements or just enemies that have been tagged with a different element uh, and you swirl it, you end up getting bonuses based on that swirl. So you can get more of your Kugaroki uh, points. Uh, you can get an attack bonus from Pyro. You can get a crit rate bonus from Cryo. 20% crit rate. That's a lot of stats. That's a lot of value. Uh, or you can get uh, some energy recharge, which is really cool. And it opens up the doors to multiple different builds for the Wanderer, in my opinion. I think he's going to be universally pretty, uh, pretty good. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. That's pretty much it. As for this one, this one is 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 a little bit helpful uh, if you want to reposition. When you attack an enemy, you can gain the descent effect, allowing you to get like a free movement in uh, and reposition. You've got a 16% chance of it happening. And if it doesn't happen, the next hit has 12% more. The next hit, 12% more. Next hit, 12% more. Now, this effect will be removed if you do an acceleration. So if you do a dash out of the way, or I, I believe raising yourself up, like flying up in the air. It will remove the effect. It won't cost anything, any of your points, but it will also fire off these little wind uh, attacks, wind arrows. And so it's a little bit of extra damage um, kind of built into his into his E ability, I suppose. A little bit more movement, a little bit more value. I don't know if it fixes things, but it's pretty good. Um, I would run him with a shielder at all times, but you could use multiple different units. Xingqiu, Yelan, you could use a little Shangling here. And I think you're going to have some pretty cool results overall. I am not sure at this time, um, you know, how he's going to perform in the meta. But again, if you build him, he's going to slap. As for Constellations, they're all very damage focused and, and they seem pretty good. This one here, um, you know, you get some extra attack speed and then you get some extra passive damage. It's pretty good. This one, I mean, it's fine. It's not like this amazing thing. 10% attack speed, whatever. This one here is interesting because as your points drop, you can get 200% more damage. Uh, which sounds really good. It sounds really good. But is that a multiplier of 200% or do you literally do 200% more? Because 200% more damage is three times the amount, right? That's, that's a lot of damage and... So if this if this actually boosts your damage that much, that's that's pretty crazy. C4, um, it just allows you to stack multiple of those passives from before. So these passives here, uh, you whenever you do one, you just get another one, and you can have three of them active at the same time. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's not bad. And then C6, this is nuts. It allows you to stay in the state longer. You regenerate some points. Um, you get some extra damage. Um, when you use your burst ability, I think you get, you get like an extra hit from your burst ability. It's crazy. Don't do it. Don't, don't C6 a unit. Don't C4 a unit. Please just, just don't do it. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. If you're going to get constellations, maybe you get C2 Kazaha. Maybe you get Nahida. Maybe you get Raiden Shogun. Um, maybe some more universal characters that can support everyone, but... Don't get Constellations. I'm telling you, uh, this game is so easy that you'll regret it. And uh, my overall thoughts are, I'm skipping. Uh, I did a couple little pulls as a meme to see if I would just snipe them on, on like a one, uh, one or two pulls. I didn't get them. I didn't get any five star. I'm on pity and I'm not going any further. I'm going to wait for Dia or someone else. He's relatively cool. Um, but I don't find this that satisfying. I really don't find it that satisfying. You're you're just kind of doing normal attacks. It's about the same fun factor as Ayato. So if you don't like Ayato, I don't think you're going to like this guy. Flying around like this, it it is not as hype as it looked. It, it just isn't. It feels like you're just spamming normal attacks and they're hitting. And you're like chilling in the air and you look cool. But it's not like stimulating and overwhelmingly cool. I'm not going to lie. And so uh, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty whelmed with them. I would recommend you get a shield so you can just barrel stuff enemies and just attack like crazy or else I think you're going to be uh, you're going to be hating your life a little bit when playing this guy. He's pretty squishy. Uh, he gets knocked up pretty bad and uh, depending on the enemies you're fighting, you could have uh, a couple troubles because repositioning, look at this, it's just going to waste a ton of your points like 
and and if you get tagged by some of these big beefy units in the abyss, um, you're just gonna die. You're gonna get one hit, right? If you have to reposition against Mengu Kenki, well, you're gonna have no de like DPS uh, because you're dodging. You have to barrel stuff or else he is going to feel like a bag of trash, in my opinion. So that's that's it. That's the video. I don't have anything else to say. Good luck on your wishes if you get them. Um, another thing is, uh, I guess, Faruzan. I'll just mention. Faruzan obviously boosts the piss out of this guy. Uh, shredding animal defenses, giving him damage. Uh, even crit damage if you ever at C6. Most of you aren't going to get uh, get her at C6. Most of you want to be C4. Some might not even be C2. Um, it is sometimes very punishing to try to get four-star units. And if you need her to make him good, then I think you have some problems, probably. Um, she feels identical to Kujo Sara. So if you don't like the play style of Kujo Sara, then you're probably not going to like Farazan. And so, like, I don't know. I'm I'm not really interested in uh, in going down that route, that route, that route, that route. I need to go to bed.